Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for the uh, virtual college exploration for all Illinois students sponsored by IACAC and StriveScan. My name is Mary Ward. I am an IACAC member in facilitating tonight's session. A couple housekeeping rules. So students, your videos are off and so you are muted also. Um, you can communicate with the panelists by using the Q&A button to ask questions throughout the presentation, but they will not be able to hear you or see you. This session is being recorded, so it will be available on our website at www.iacac.org in about a week, but we have a lot of sessions. So go to our website, check it out, sign up for, for some more sessions, and at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to our panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, hi everyone. I hope you're all doing well this evening. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So, thank you for joining us uh, today for our Why Go Out of State session. I'm Joanne Germano with the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Uh, tonight's session is going to provide students and families with information about options that exist beyond your home state of Illinois and the associated benefits of considering an out of state institution. So we're going to demystify the admissions process and the cost of attendance. We're going to also offer scholarship opportunities and financial aid, as well as talk about student life, diversity, and other helpful information to help you find your best match school. Feel free at any time to type in questions that you might have in the Q&A box. We're going to do our best to answer those both during and after the presentation. So as I mentioned, I'm Joanne with the University of Massachusetts Lowell. I've been with the university about eight years. I'm based in California. So thank you for joining us tonight. Hi everybody, I'm Vanessa Karam, also with the University of Massachusetts Lowell. I am based on the North Shore of Chicago, so I'm local for all of you guys and um, it's great to meet you. Hi everyone, my name is April Lynch. I'm with Syracuse University and I am another regional representative here in the greater Chicago area. Good evening, uh, my name is Keegan White, Associate Director of Admissions at Lawrence University in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, this is my seventh year in admissions and my third year at, back at Lawrence. I am a, an alum of Lawrence um, and I'm based in the quaint little hamlet known as Chicago, Illinois. Hi everyone, I'm Veronica McLaughlin. I'm an assistant regional director for recruitment at Drake University. Um, I've been with Drake for about two years and I cover a large part of the Chicagoland area as well as the state of Indiana. And um, I'm based out of Batavia, Illinois, so the Western suburbs. So you heard many of us mention that we're located in the Chicago area and, and why is that important to you? So we are regional admission counselors, each one of us that are presenting tonight. There are 24 regional groups across the country and what we do, we are admission counselors for colleges and universities that are either um, a little bit farther from the area that you live in or maybe even across the country or around the world. Um, and our job is to help you guys connect you with our colleges and universities that are a little bit further from you. Um, we are close so that we can come into your high schools, we can do presentations, we can talk to you at college fairs um, and you know engage with you and really be that person to walk with you through each step of the process. And if we go to the next slide, um, this is even more important because most of us are members of CAR here, the Chicago Area Regional Representatives. We're a group here in Chicago that's made up of about 130 college representatives from different colleges and universities across the country and around the world. Again, we're here to help you make sure that you are learning as much as you can about the different institutions that we have. And if you have questions that we are there to help you, um, you know, understand the answers and to engage again with um, you and your families to make sure that you are as informed as possible about each of our institutions before you make that jump to go somewhere a little bit farther. So thank you.
Sorry about that. So in Illinois, there are 308 colleges, community colleges, and trade schools that you can choose from. But if you look beyond Illinois, choices increase to over 4,000 colleges in the U.S. and 17,000 colleges internationally. These options are going to expose you to colleges of a wide variety of sizes, student populations, locations, academic offerings, and extracurricular activities. So having this many college options is actually going to allow students to find your best match fit um, academically, socially, emotionally, and financially. So what we did here on the next slide is we narrow down about five key advantages to attending college out of state. First, you wanna choose a school where majors are not impacted. So impacted means that there are more students for a specific major than the university can accommodate with classes and professors. So when a major is impacted, sometimes more, ma more popular majors such as nursing, engineering, computer science, it takes students longer to graduate and earn their bachelor's. Sometimes it's taking students five to six years because they cannot get the classes they need each semester. Now direct entry is the opposite where students actually start right in the major and graduate in four years. You can find schools uh, where your major is not impacted and this allows you for also more flexibility for a minor. A new location equals adventure and growth. So college is actually the best time to try living in a new place. I always tell students now is the time after high school to take an adventure, possibly go out of state or abroad. Home's home, you can always come back, but after high school, once you get into your career or a specific, or maybe start a family, it's harder to do that now then. So now is the time after high school to travel a little bit. And then admissions rates. So many colleges have lower admissions rate. The average admissions rate in the US is 67%. If you are in a state where an ad admissions are low, looking out of state can actually be a huge advantage to you. If a college has an admissions rate of 10 to 15%, it means your chances of being admitted are actually slim because that university is only able to admit a small percentage of their total application pool. And then finally, you'll actually be able to possibly save money going out of state once we get into scholarships and financial aid. Yeah, so um, speaking of save, saving money, let's, let's compare and break down some of the costs uh, of attending an Illinois college versus looking out of state. So you can see the University of Illinois costs over $35,000 a year for an Illinois resident and this is the total amount for a student living on campus. So we call that the cost of attendance. It includes the average tuition and fees, room and board, and associated costs like books and transportation from home, et cetera. So the average cost of attendance for universities outside of Illinois for an Illinois resident is actually pretty comparable as you can see. And while the cost of private colleges is noticeably higher with scholarships and financial aid, as Joanne mentioned, uh, the out-of-pocket cost is often comparable with the public college options that you may have. So using Lawrence as an example, our average student currently pays about $24,000 per year, even though our cost of attendance uh, up front is about $63,000. So, so, you know, for an average private college, you might, you might be looking at a price that's lower than that typical in-state college price. And lower income students often pay much less than that at a place like Lawrence, for example. Okay, so now let's break down the cost of attendance a little more because there's a lot of hidden costs associated with, with attending college. So first of all, remember that tuition is just one part of the equation. That doesn't really tell you much without factoring in other costs. So we're gonna break down some of those. Books, ask yourself, does the university offer used books for sale or rent or maybe even to borrow from the library? Um, are there cheaper electronic options? Maybe the college includes the cost of books um, in your financial aid package. So look out for things like that. Uh, travel, what modes of transportation make sense for you? How often are you really going to go home? Be honest with yourself about that and think about how much that trip is going to cost and multiply that by the number of trips that could add up quickly, right? Especially if you need to fly. 
And if you do need to fly, once you get off the plane, are you close to campus or do you then need to take another form of transportation and what is that gonna cost? So the, the travel can really vary widely in terms of cost depending on where you're looking. Uh, also think about fees. Many colleges charge several additional fees and they vary from college to college. So some examples of that include an activity fee, maybe a library fee, rec center membership, health center fees for going to the doctor, course fees, lab fees, um, special software or equipment for like an engineering or computer science major, for example. Some colleges even charge a one-time enrollment fee that could be several hundred dollars that first semester. So all of those can really add up. Then um, think about room and board. This cost can be highly variable depending on what options you have and, and what your, your demands are in terms of your housing. Um, the cost of living in the area, residence requirements, can you move off of campus and, and share costs with roommates, um, and then meal plans too. There's a, you know, a, a wide range of meal plans and you want enough food that you're not going to, you're not going to starve, but, um, but you know, those, that can add up, right? And then of course, health insurance. Um, most colleges require that you have some sort of health insurance if you're living on campus there. Um, and if you already have insurance or you're part of your parents' plan, then that cost may not be anything additional. Just make sure that your parents' plan will cover care in the local health network for the college that you're choosing. Uh, I've actually worked with a student that did not, um, where they realized after they arrived on campus that in fact their, their family's insurance was really not helpful to them um, on our campus. I'm going to add two more things, Joanne, before you switch the slide. Um, one is that if your parents have a college savings plan, you'll want to confirm the terms and make sure that that money that they've saved can be used at the out-of-state colleges you're considering. And then the second one is if you're a low-income student, you may be eligible for state funds like the Monetary Assistance Program here in Illinois, the MAP grant, um, but only if you attend an Illinois school. So just bear that into mind, in, in mind. Um, all of these things need to be looked at when, when you're figuring out that, that you know, final cost of attendance number. Okay, now Joanne. Uh, okay, so fact or fiction. Um, you're probably at this point saying, Keegan, it sounds like you're telling me that's gonna cost more to go out of state. Um, that is not necessarily the case. And, and, and I'll tell you a few reasons why. First of all, colleges in several neighboring states participate in something called the Midwest Student Exchange Program which makes tuition lower for an Illinois resident. And many of these colleges actually position themselves so that their tuition for an Illinois resident is lower than a comparable Illinois school. Um, so, so that tuition might actually just be a wash or even cheaper because of that program, the, the Midwest Student Exchange. Many offer um, more opportunities for merit scholarships than their in-state counterparts to help offset that tuition difference. So even if they're not part of the Midwest Student Exchange, um, they may have additional scholarships available to, to, to make up that difference. The same goes for need-based grants. So some colleges offer more generous need-based aid than others. And in particular, private university, tuition is the same whether you live in or out of state. So there's no additional tuition and many of them have larger endowments and more generous and flexible aid policies. So once again, using Lawrence as an example, our total cost of attendance, they said, is 63,000 a year. That average student pays 24,000 after aid. And we admit 70% of our applicants. So if you're a good fit for Lawrence and you have a good chance of getting in, you've got a good chance of receiving generous financial aid as well and, and offsetting a lot of that cost of going out of state. Um, and then finally, the cost of living is going to vary widely from state to state. Um, Illinois is quite a bit higher than, than most nearby states. So all other things being equal, there's going to be a huge difference between the cost of attendance at a school in San Francisco versus Spring Champaign or Springfield here in Illinois versus Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So, um, you know, take that into account as well. And, and Vanessa is going to break down many of these points on this next slide. Vanessa? Thank you, Keegan. So we're talking about now why value is important. So value is important because when you want to make the most of your college experience and you want it to be meaningful, your end goal once you graduate should be to get a job. 
or to get into grad school. So when you look into the total cost of attendance, which we said includes tuition, books, room board, meal plan, and travel costs, you want to look at all those for the university that you want to go to. Again, if your college requires you to take a plane ride, a train, or a bus, you have to factor those costs in three to four times per year, as Keegan was talking about. Colleges have different programs that can help you gain more value from your college experience and give you a leg up for when you graduate. If you know what you want to major in, ask the college representatives like us about internships, co-ops, hands-on learning opportunities, and also you will also want to find out about starting salaries from recent graduates in your field of study. These factors can help you see the value in what your college has to offer that will help you get to your end goal of getting the best job that you can in your field. Additionally, college should be a really fun time in your life. You wanna have spending money as well. You wanna do things with your classmates, go out, go out to dinner, go out to see um, when things open up, go out to concerts and stuff like that. So you don't wanna forget to take those costs into account as they may vary, like Keegan said, depending on whether what city you go to, what state you go to, if you're in a city versus a more rural area. So those are all important factors to consider. Okay, so some questions to ask yourself, such as, can I get the classes I need to graduate? So we recommend understanding the curriculum for your major and to see what classes you need to take over the four years. If your major is direct entry, like Joanne had talked about earlier, meaning you start right into your program, you should be able to get all the classes that you need to get your bachelor's in four years. If you start, start college as undeclared and you don't know what you wanna major in, you may have to add more classes that are required for your degree once you decide, and that may end up adding more time onto the four years. Can I double major and still graduate in four years? Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. It really depends on what you're going to double major in. Again, ask your admissions counselor or an advisor at the college that you plan to go to if there's a double major possibility for what you're interested in doing. Can I change majors and graduate in four years? It's really hard to know sometimes when you're in high school what you want to major in. Even students who say they know what they want to major in realize that it's not what they thought it was going to be after they begin classes. So sometimes students change majors. If you start in a major with a lot of electives, for instance, sociology, it may be hard then to change to a program with a very structured course schedule like engineering. Therefore, it may take you longer than four years to earn your bachelor's, which in turn adds more costs. And if I get admitted as undecided, will I get into my preferred major once I decide? Again, this really all depends. Many programs such as mechanical engineering and nursing require you to apply right into the program when you're still in high school. And if you don't, it can be really hard to get in after you've started because the programs are already full because they're very popular. Again, all colleges have an advising staff and a career services staff to help you declare a major by your sophomore year of college. All right, so let's talk about some of the additional benefits, um, maybe not so tangible from the start, but incredibly important. So when you go off to college, you're going to experience um, incredible growth and confidence and independence. And for a lot of you, this whole college selection, it might be the first time in your lives that you're able to make this big decision that is going to affect your future years to come for the rest of your life and I know it can feel overwhelming but um, it's really exciting it's really exciting because when you go off to college you you begin to gain that independence you become the person that you are meant to be um, you learn new things about yourself and when you when you look to go out of state you have the opportunity to explore whole new parts of the country um, to really break away and experience you know, the culture, the history, the food, um, whether you're thinking about going as far west as California, um, the Northeast, the South. I actually went away to college. I grew up in Toledo, Ohio, and I decided to go about five states away to South Carolina for my college experience. Um, I was ready to just kind of start that um, you know, new independent life for myself, being one of six kids. And I just, I, I needed to find out who I was. So I went pretty far away for school. Um, some of you may decide, you know, whatever your comfort level is to go once, whether it's one state over or to the other, to the other coast. Um, that's really gonna depend on thinking, how long do you wanna go without seeing your family? What do the travel expenses look like? And thing like, things like that. But keep in mind, even going from one state to the next, 
you're going to be able to experience again just all different cities and opportunities and the sports teams that are playing there and things that you just haven't been exposed to in your own hometown so um, it's a great opportunity to just get out and see other parts of the country and, and what they have to offer and you're able to make new friends um, i always say there's nothing wrong with going to college near where you grew up um, but sometimes if you go to a college where most of the students live within an hour radius of their home, typically what happens is on the weekends, those campuses turn to ghost towns because everybody's going home to hang out with their high school friends. Um, they're going home to do laundry at their parents' house. And if you're hoping to have an experience that's not like high school 2.0, um, then you definitely should consider going to college out of state. Um, at Drake University, 70% of our student body population is from outside of the state of Iowa. So there again, you have a chance to meet friends all, from all over the country and even from all over the world when the schools have um, an international population on campus. And you get to learn more about yourself. I, I always say, you know, there's a great graphic. I actually made one myself. And I don't know if it's going to be backwards for you. It might be backwards for you. But what it says is, Inside this circle is your comfort zone. But where do you grow? You grow way outside of your comfort zone. And that's the case with just about anything in your life. Um, and so I know that it's comfortable to be home. I know that it's comfortable to be close to home. But you know, in order to grow, in order to challenge yourself, um, you got to get out of your comfort zone. And looking at colleges out of state is really going to allow you to do that. And then finally, meeting experts in certain fields. You know, when you go to college, it, pick a capital city, pick anywhere throughout the country, um, a lot specialize in certain industries. And depending on what you want to study or what field you want to go into, you know, you might want to consider that. You know, where are the areas in the country that have those corporations or those hospitals? Um, you know, those manufacturing plants, whatever it might be that you're interested in, you know, make sure you're looking at college destinations that have that nearby so that you can take advantage of some internships or research opportunities in those areas. And that's what's going to get you to kind of create that professional network of connections um, and meeting those experts in, in those certain fields right in your own backyard from your college is key. And it's really going to help you build that impressive resume. And then some final thoughts, you know, first, I want to I want to commend you for joining a session like this. Um, this is so smart to take advantage of these types of presentations and opportunities to meet some admissions counselors. Um, I always like to say there's not a single one of us that makes commission off of you coming to our universities. We genuinely just are here to help you to provide all the information so that you can make the best college choice for you. And so any opportunity that you see, whether it's an email that you get from your college counselor, you know, to respond to that email or connect with them on some Zoom meetings. I know we're living in crazy times right now and we all would love to meet um, at your high school or over a cup of coffee at Panera, but you know, this is where we're at. So try to take advantage of those, any opportunities that you might have to get to uh, connect with your admissions counselors. And then, um, you know, when I say talk with a school you've never heard of, definitely consider, I, you know, you can look at a map of the United States. I mean, this is what's so cool about the process is if you're on this presentation now, that means you are considering going to school out of state. And that means you maybe have the opportunity to look at a map and really think, where would you like to be for the next four or six years? Um, sometimes just, look at that and then do some research on what colleges and universities are in those areas. It doesn't always have to be what your parents suggest or your you know, high school counselor, your aunt or your neighbor tell you you should look into. You know, really do some research on your own and, um, and consider those schools that maybe just aren't right in front of you all the time. And then ask questions that are meaningful to you. And what I say is there's, Nothing so insignificant that you think, well, that shouldn't matter in my college search. If it matters to you, it matters in your college search. There are over 4,000 colleges and universities in our country. Um, you're going to find the right fit for you. So whether that means 
you know, you're asking questions, there's a certain club that you want to be a part of, um, you know, uh, bike riding club or um, a, a sign language club or whatever it might be, ask if the university has that. Um, if you have certain food restrictions, you know, you want to make sure you ask those questions that are important to you. Inclusivity, you want to find out about that on campus. Um, I even say, you know, if you love Starbucks and you can't imagine going to college without a Starbucks on campus or somewhere nearby, um, ask the question. It's okay. Um, you're going to be able to find that right college fit for you. And it's going to be based around those things that are meaningful. And, and some people might say frivolous, but again, this is your experience and what you want out of out of college. So um, don't there's no there's no silly thing to include in your search. And I'm going to go ahead and share a little bit about Drake University. Um, we are a private liberal arts four year university located in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, we have just under 3,000 undergraduate students with our graduate programs. We're, we have about 5,000 for a total enrollment. So we're right in that, right in the smaller end of the mid-sized category. Um, however, for our size, we offer big school opportunities. We have over 100 undergraduate majors to choose from. We've got close to 150 different student clubs and organizations. Um, we're Division I in sports in the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, lots of school spirit. You never have to pay to go cheer on your classmates in any of our games. Your average class size, though, because of our student enrollment, is going to be about 21 students in class and about a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So every single class that you take at Drake is taught by a professor. There's not a single class taught by a teacher's assistant. Um, and the one really, oh, and I was going to say, we also do have a Starbucks right on campus, brand new, it's fantastic. Um, but probably our biggest selling point is being located in the city of Des Moines. Uh, it is the fastest growing city in the Midwest. Forbes magazine ranks it in the top five best cities for young working professionals. And we are the largest university in the city of Des Moines. So we have that premier partnership um, with them. So all the corporations and the hospitals in the area partner with us to make sure that our students are getting internship opportunities, research opportunities, and job opportunities. So you really do have a chance to build up that impressive professional resume to go along with a very personalized, exceptional academic experience. So um, I would love to you know, connect with you if you'd like to uh, reach out, and I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to Keegan. Thanks, Veronica. Uh, Lawrence University is a small college of 1,500 students located three hours north of Illinois in beautiful Appleton, Wisconsin's fifth largest city. Within walking distance of restaurants and coffee shops, parks and trails, and a Broadway style theater. Uh, in addition to our residential campus in Appleton, we have two satellite campuses. One is a lodge on Lake Michigan in Door County that students use as a weekend retreat center, and our London Center, which is the most popular of our 50 study abroad programs. Uh, Lawrence is unique in that we are both a nationally ranked College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and a highly selective conservatory of music, each undergraduate only. Above all, Lawrence is student-centered. Students are challenged and nurtured in small classes with tons of faculty interaction, thanks to one of the smallest student to faculty ratios in the country. Our students and faculty are curious, welcoming, engaged, and passionate about what they do. We are small in number, but rich in people and resources, all deeply invested in the success of our students. The academic program is bookended by two quintessential scholarly experiences, Freshman Studies, which is a survey of the liberal arts, and Senior Experience, a capstone project that is the culmination of a Lawrence education. In between, many students pursue multiple majors and minors and enrichment opportunities like research, study abroad, internships, etc. As I said, Lawrence is student-centered, and that starts with me. So I hope to hear from you, and I look forward to getting to know you as a person and reading your application. I'll now pass it to April Lynch at Syracuse. 
Thanks, Keegan. Um, so Syracuse University is located in upstate New York. It's a two hour direct flight out of O'Hare where you can take the Amtrak right from Union Station to Shea over to Syracuse as well. We have about 15,000 undergrads, a couple thousand grads. So we're firmly in that mid-size range for institutions. We have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 26 students. With that said, 60% of our, our classes have 20 or fewer students in them. Our average student has about a 3.7 GPA and a four-point scale. This year, the, for this coming fall, we are test optional, so it's completely up to you if you'd like to submit a test score or not. We are a Research One institution, which is the top tier of research. We're also Division One for Athletics in the ACC. Um, we are very well known for our school spirit, but I also like to think we're all very well known for our students. They are active, they are driven, they are the world changers, the people that see a problem and come up with solutions and then try to implement them. Um, we have a robust study abroad program. We have five campuses around the world where we have our own faculty teaching. So you can go and study at one of those centers or you can attend one of our 60 other world partners where you can do a full immersion study abroad type trip. Um, we also have about 300 clubs, athletics and organizations. So if you want the chance to be involved when you come to campus, this would be a great chance for you to come and explore Syracuse and our surrounding areas. We also have three other satellite campuses in the US. So main campus is in Syracuse, New York. We have a campus in New York City, one in Washington, DC, and one out in LA. So I welcome you to apply using the Common App. If you have any questions, please do reach out to me and have a great night. Thanks. Thanks, April. And I'm Joanne with the University of Massachusetts Lowell. So you can actually get a direct flight from Chicago into Boston and then jump on the train in downtown Boston and get to our campus. We're at, right on the New Hampshire border. So it's about a 35 to 40 minute train ride. Very scenic campus. We're right on the Merrimack River. We're mid-sized public research. We're about 11,000 undergraduates, but our average class size is 25 because we have over 500 full-time professors. 94% um, of our professors hold the highest degree in the field they teach, so most of them have their PhDs and most of them have experience in the field. We have over 100 direct entry majors you can choose from. Most popular are going to be engineering, business, and biology. We, do, we were the first school in the country to have plastics engineering. Those students do a lot of work with prosthetics and some of our plastics alum are currently working on COVID vaccines. We also do a lot of four plus one tracks. So if you're interested in anything in the STEM field, criminal justice, business, psychology, history, just to name a few, you can do a bachelor's and a master's in just five years. We're a heavy internship and co-op school, so you will get work experience in before you graduate. 95% of our students are currently employed within six months of graduation. We partner with uh, 200 companies nationally for a lot of that hands-on experience, and we do study abroad in over 40 countries. So there's a lot of opportunity to have fun and explore. We also are division one in athletics and 90% of our first year students live on campus. They're getting involved in any of our 275 clubs and organizations. We have 10 concerts a semester too. We've had Drake, Billy Joel and Snoop Dogg come to campus to perform. We also had Oprah on campus. Um, two falls ago. We look for a strong B average and we have great scholarships for out-of-state students. So either myself or Vanessa would love to talk to you more about UMass Lowell. But now we're gonna open it up for questions. If you do have any questions, feel free to type those in the chat. And here is also all of our contact information. So feel free to either take this down or take a picture of it and reach out to us if any questions come up. Great. And while we're waiting for you guys to type in your questions, we have one or two common questions that students ask that we'll answer in the meantime for you. So what are some real world things that you'll be prepared for by studying out of state? Um, to me, you learn to be independent. And by that, I mean, you are faced with situations that maybe your peers aren't faced with who remain back at home. You're making decisions about how you act daily and um, what you need to do, your priorities, um, and you're setting them. So that's one thing that you might be learning by studying out of state. And I'll see if any of my colleagues wanna jump in with another idea. 
You know, I can just chime in from personal experience. Um, growing up in a kind of a bubble in Ohio, uh, very surrounded by people similar to me all the time. And then I did break away to go to the South and it was the South. And um, just to be able to experience a whole new culture and to be around people that didn't necessarily think the way that I did. And, and that's something that I forgot to mention um, during my part of the presentation, but to be able to break away from that sort of um, home life conditioning that you've that and not to say that it's bad or wrong, but to be able to formulate maybe your own thoughts once you can kind of break away from what you've just grown up with and what you've been conditioned to know um, and going away really helps you do that. Great. Another question that we typically get is, what happens if I get homesick? I can't easily get home if I'm a few hours away or across the country. How do I combat that? Um, and I think part of combating that is to become involved on your campus from the beginning. Join those clubs and athletics and organizations that each of us touched on in our, our many presentations about our schools. That's one way for you to connect to people, to um, start really experiencing college in the way that you want to experience it and, and take your mind off of that. And don't forget, it is really easy to pick up the phone, send a text, um, have that touch of home anytime you need it. Um, but we also all have offices on campus. So there's counseling offices, your faculty, your professors will be there for you. Um, there are staff members, residents, hall directors. There's a whole community on each of our campuses there to support you and connect you with ourselves uh, while you're here with us. Anybody else would like to jump in? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in and just, just say, Probably every college in America has some kind of activities fair in the first week before classes start. And, and just, you know, if, you're, if you feel like you're having a little bit of trouble connecting or, or you're feeling a bit homesick, just, just go and sign up for a couple of things, as, as April said. Um, you know, whether it's something that you're particularly passionate about already or just something that catches your eye. I mean, for me, it was swing dancing and that was like one of the things that I was into and I had never done it before I set foot on campus and and like it was something that was kind of with me throughout college and any time that I was like I'm not sure what to do this Friday night there was always a swing dance you know or whatever so like you you got to find your sort of find your your happy place your comfort zone on campus and then that takes time so be patient with yourself too. I'd also like you to think about the point that there are, you know, how many, 4,000 colleges and universities in the country. Um, most of them are located outside of the state you're living in. So your choices as far as where you're going to go to school are that much greater when you start looking outside of your hometown. And another thing to think about is, you know, oftentimes absence makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> um, you go out of your hometown and you start to, you know, look at it and remember, oh, these are the things I loved about it. You get excited to bring your friends home from school with you and kind of show off the different places around your hometown. Um, you know, little things like that um, become an excitement for you as you're as you're kind of going away. And and one more fun point, like. You get one shot to do this, to have this full college experience that each one of you is probably dreaming about. What does that college experience look like in your eyes? Are you going home every weekend? Are you living independently on your own? Um, are you making decisions about, you know, different things? You know, really think to yourself, what type of experience do I want to have? And then go for it. Well said, April. Yeah, I was just actually going to kind of piggyback off that and, and just, just say that in, in my, my experience, and I have a few gray hairs, so maybe I guess I have some experience, but uh, just, just observing, uh, observing this process and, the, and this, the different choices that students make, it seems to me that the students that, that 
go outside of their comfort zone, as Veronica said, are the ones that are most likely to make ex to make exciting and and um, sort of growth choices again and again and again in the future and end up having really interesting careers and end up having really interesting study abroad experiences and whatever. And the students that really kind of play it safe at the, the college level, they go there with a lot of their high school friends and they kind of, re they remain kind of relatively the same. Sure, obviously they're getting a degree and, and preparing for a career and whatever, but they're, they're not getting that stretching experience necessarily, especially if you're kind of going with a cohort of high school friends. So that, that would be my, um, my advice to you if you're looking for, for that kind of college experience. Don't be afraid to, to take a leap this, this, uh, with this choice. Okay, students. Well, it looks like we're wrapping up our questions portion of the evening. So again, please take a moment and jot down any of our contact information. We would be happy to answer emails or phone calls from you. Any questions that you or your families might have about going out of state or, of course, any of our institutions. Thank you for joining us tonight and good luck with your college search. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good luck. Take care. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really um, appreciate you guys taking the time to get on to find out more. Some great information tonight. It was awesome. Um, I will let you know, students, that as I mentioned before, this is being recorded, um, but you will be able to see it on our website at www.iacac.org. And again, we have a lot of other sessions, so please check, check our website out to sign up for more sessions. As soon as you close this window, there will be another one that pops up with four questions please take some time to give us some feedback and we really appreciate you taking time to spend time with us tonight. So thank you again and have a great night everybody.